In today's A-level biology video, we're going to be looking at the Hardy-Weinberg principle, which is all to do with working out how many times a particular allele appears in a population. So we're really looking at the genetics topic. Before we get into the nitty gritty of the Hardy-Weinberg principle, let's first of all look at a few key definitions. The first one is gene pool. Now the gene pool is all the alleles of all the genes of all the individuals in a population at any particular time. The allelic frequency now is the number of times an allele occurs within the gene pool. And as always, it's so much easier to understand what these definitions mean if we look at a particular case study. And our case study today will be examining the disease cystic fibrosis. So just to remind you, remember cystic fibrosis is caused by a recessive allele. And so if we use an F to represent that allele, you'll need two copies of that lowercase f in order to get the disease. If you have either uppercase F, lowercase f, or two uppercase Fs, then your person will be healthy. Although obviously this genotype here will mean that you're a carrier of the disease. Cystic fibrosis is a disorder where excess mucus is produced. So let's work out how we can use cystic fibrosis to help us understand the meanings of the word gene pool and allelic frequency. So we're going to start by making the statement that any individual has two of these alleles in every one of their cells. And so if there were 10,000 people in a population, then there will be 20,000 alleles in the gene pool for this gene. So if we look at the three possible genotypes, which I've already mentioned, and these are the genotypes that relate to cystic fibrosis. The first one is the homozygous dominant genotype. Homozygous meaning the same allele, dominant meaning that it's the capitalized version. You have the homozygous recessive genotype. Homozygous meaning again two of the same alleles, recessive meaning that they're both lowercase. And then the third type is the heterozygous version, which remember could either be uppercase lowercase f or lowercase f, uppercase f. It could come in either order, so do be aware of that. So if we look at the Hardy-Weinberg principle, the first thing to be aware of is that in any population, the total number of alleles is taken to be one. So that's just a statement you need to be aware of. So it's a bit like the probability topic in maths, where one is 100%. Now let's, for argument's sake, say that within a particular population, Pretend that the genotype, capital F, capital F, was true for every single person in the population, then we would say that the frequency of that dominant allele F would be 1. And therefore it makes total sense to say that the frequency of the recessive allele, lowercase f, would be 0. How about we take a different scenario now, which is that we say that everyone in the particular population was heterozygous, so therefore had an uppercase F, lowercase f, and then we could make the following statement. The frequency of the dominant allele F would be 0 0.5, and it follows that the frequency of the recessive allele F would be 0 0.5. So what is the point of the Hardy-Weinberg principle? Well, it's used to calculate the frequencies of the alleles of a particular gene in a population. The Hardy-Weinberg principle also predicts that the proportion of dominant and recessive alleles of any gene in a population remains the same from one generation to the next. However, this is only true if the following is adhered to. 
number one, no mutations arise, number two, that the population is isolated, three, that there is no selection pressure, four, that our population is large, and five, that mating occurs randomly. So now we're actually ready to look at the Hardy-Weinberg principle and what the equation for it actually is. So notice that the dominant allele is given the letter P, whereas the recessive allele is given the letter Q. Because we said that all the alleles in the population must add up to 1, it therefore makes sense that P plus Q equals 1. Let's use our cystic fibrosis example here, just to prove to you that it all makes sense. Remember that dominant allele in my example above was F, and my recessive allele was lowercase f, and therefore F plus F equals 1. Now remember that those alleles come in pairs, so we have a potential combination of these genotypes within one particular population. And again, we know that that will add up to 1. Because in the Hardy-Weinberg principle, we use P to represent capital F, because it is the dominant allele, we can therefore write this. And remember that we use Q to represent our recessive allele. Let's gather together our terms. So P times P, remember, is the same as P squared. We've got 2PQ if we add PQ and QP together, and then we have Q squared. And these two equations are the important things to be aware of with the Hardy-Weinberg principle, and they're the two equations you're actually going to use to help solve a question. Everything else in pink is just me showing how we derive this. So let's look at some past exam practice. Lyra Shish. Sea otters were close to extinction at the start of the 20th century. Following a ban on hunting sea otters, the size of their populations began to increase. Scientists studied the frequency of two alleles of a gene in one population of sea otters. The dominant allele T codes for an enzyme. The other allele, lowercase t, is recessive and does not produce a functional enzyme. In a population of sea otters, the allele frequency for the recessive allele T was found to be 0 0.2. Use the Hardy-Weinberg equation to calculate the percentage of homozygous recessive sea otters in this population to show you're working. So the first thing we want to do is just write out the two Hardy-Weinberg equations. It's always really good practice to do this. And now let's make some labels as to what we know from the question. So we know that the allele frequency for the recessive allele T was found to be 0 0.2. Remember that the recessive allele is Q in this situation. So we know that Q equals 0 0.2. Look back at the question, what's it actually asking us? It's asking us to calculate the percentage of homozygous recessive sea otters. Well, the homozygous recessive ones are therefore, by definition, Q squared. So you simply do 0 0.2 squared. And then the last place to make sure you don't slip up on is the fact that it needs to be a percentage. So times by 100 to turn that into a percent. So the answer here is 4%. What does the Hardy-Weinberg principle predict about the frequency of the allele lowercase t after another 10 generations? It should remain the same, and that's because of everything else I stated about there being no selection pressures, being a large population, random mating, etc. What does the Hardy-Weinberg principle predict? That's worth three marks. Remember that the Hardy-Weinberg principle predicts that the frequency of alleles remains the same from one generation to the next. And that's providing that there's no selection pressure and that mating occurs randomly. Taking a look at another example now, warfarin is a substance which inhibits blood clotting. Rats which eat warfarin are killed due to internal bleeding. Some rats are resistant to warfarin as they have the allele WR. Rats have three possible genotypes. WRWR, which means that they're resistant. WRWS meaning that they're also resistant and WSWS meaning that they are not resistant to warfarin. In a population of wild rats, 51% were resistant to warfarin. Use the Hardy-Weinberg equation to estimate the percentage of rats in this population which would be heterozygous for warfarin resistance. Show your working. Again, let's make some notes then. So first of all, let's point out the genotypes which would be resistant to warfarin. We're told that in the question. We're then being asked in a question to find the percentage of rats which would be heterozygous for warfarin resistance. So they're the rats which have this combination. Heterozygous meaning having two different alleles. Now let's make a few notes. 
relating to the Hardy-Weinberg equation, which remember states that P plus Q equals 1 and P squared plus 2PQ plus Q squared equals 1. So now we need to work out how our genotypes relate to P and Q. We're going to use WR to be related to P and WS to be related to Q. So in this situation, we therefore know that we can assign that P squared and this we know is PQ. Looking down at what we're being asked for in the question, we're effectively being asked for how many PQ rats there are. Let's zoom in here. So we know that all the rats which are P squared and all the rats which are PQ are resistant to warfarin and they make up 0.51 of the population. That therefore means that Q squared makes up the remaining 0.49 and this is immediately jumping out that I'm doing the right thing because I know I can work out Q by doing the square root of 0 0.49 to get a value which is therefore 0 0.7. Looking at what's available to us, we know that we can now work out the value of P because P plus 0 0.7 must equal 1, so therefore P equals 0 0.3. And now we're ready to find out what PQ is. Because remember those alleles can occur either way around, we're after 2 PQ, so we just need to do 2 times 0 0.3 times 0 0.7, so we get 0 0.42, which remember as a percentage is 42%. Last question we're going to do now. So some humans have a genetic resistance to infection. A recessive allele gives increased resistance to infection by the malarial parasite. In a population, the proportion of babies who are homozygous for this allele is 0 0.1. Use the Hardy-Weinberg equation to calculate the expected proportion of heterozygotes in this population. Show you're working. Okay, making notes therefore. So let's use the letter H to represent this allele. So we know a recessive allele gives increased resistance. So we know that this is going to give resistance to that malarial parasite. There's going to be no resistance. Remember that we use Q to represent that recessive allele. So Q squared is going to be resistance. 2PQ or P squared is going to mean no resistance. Looking at the question, we're looking for the expected proportion of heterozygotes. So really we're after 2PQ. It says that the pop in a population, the proportion of babies who are homozygous for this allele is 0 0.01. So I can say that straight away, that Q squared equals 0 0.01. Let's write out our Hardy-Weinberg equations. It's going to be very straightforward to work out Q by simply square rooting 0 0.01. Q equals 0 0.1. P plus Q equals 1, which means therefore that P equals 0 0.9. We're after 2PQ because we're looking at the proportion of heterozygotes. So just do 2 times 0 0.9 times 0 0.1 to get 0 0.18. And that is our final answer.